محمد الهادي البشير قد جاءنا حق النذير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا مولانا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وحبيب رب العالمين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا ولا فهم لنا إلا ما فهمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا من فضلك علما التوبة لازمة للجميع فهي شرط في البدايات وكمال في النهايات ولا يستغنى عنها ولا لمقام من المقامات that, that tawbah is necessary for everybody it's a condition at the beginning uh, when one begins turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, one repents from one's sins and it is a perfection towards the end when one has abandoned uh, outward acts of disobedience but is continuing to progress towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a requirement, tawbah is a requirement for, uh, for everybody and it's a requirement for every spiritual station. It's, it's obligatory for somebody who's beginning the spiritual path and it's a perfection for somebody who has, who's towards the end of the spiritual path. If the Prophet وسلم, would uh, repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his forgiveness, more than 70 times in every um, gathering and more than 100 times every day, then how, sh- how should our state be? Tawbah is of various kinds. You have repentance, you can repent from sins, you can repent from uh, defects and flaws, you can, de- you can repent, there is repentance from acts of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there is repentance from everything apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ليس الشأن من الإنسان أن لا يذنب ولكن الشأن أن لا يصر على الذنب. What matters is not that one does not commit a sin, but what matters is that one does not, one should not persist in a sin. وليس الشأن أن تحب الله ولكن الشأن أن يحبك الله. What matters is not that you love Allah, but what matters is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala love you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who frequently repent, and He loves those who purify themselves. The conditions of tawbah are known. عن الذنب الإقلاع عن المعصية to, no, The first one is to stop committing the sin that one is repenting from والعزم على عدم العودة and uh, resolving never to return والندم على عليها and the third is uh, have feeling remorse for having done it قد قال صلى الله عليه وسلم الندم توبة. And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that that remorse is توبة. فجعل العلماء الندم 
في التوبة يعني من شروط التوبة الندم فجعلوا الندم هو الركن الركين كالحج عرفة معلوم أنه في واجبات كثيرة في الحج لكن من فاتت فاته وقوف عرفة فاته الحج ومن فاته في التوبة الندم فاتت التوبة So uh, Tawbah is a remorse is an integral part of Tawbah. So whoever, um, whoever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in another hadith, said Hajj is Arafah. Hajj has other parts too. But when he said Hajj is Arafah, it tells us that it's the most important part of Araf of Hajj. So if somebody misses Arafah, when they've missed Hajj. In the same way, the scholars, they say that remorse is the most important part of repentance. So if one misses uh, remorse, then one has missed the Tawbah. الإقلاع والعزم على عدم العودة والندم لا بد من أن تستبرئ من من أذنبت معهم أو ظلمتهم أو أخطأت معهم فلا بد منها لا تكفي التوبة فقط عن الذنب لا بد من أن تستسمح من من له عليك حق. These three conditions are when the sin that one has committed is between one and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. But if the sin consists of wronging other people, then there's a fourth condition. One also has to restore the wrong that has been done and to ask them to uh, forgive one, seek their forgiveness. <laughs> مظلمة أن أحد أمرين إما أن يسمح ويصفح وإما أن ينبه صاحب الظلم الذي وقع أن ينبهه على ذلك وهذا هذا هذا موفق أما أن يتركه وشأنه ثم يطالبه في الآخرة فهذا ليس من الأخوة في شيء لك شيء عندي طالبني وقل لي ربما أكون أنا أخطأت وأنا لا أدري ربما أكون أنا فعلت وأنا لا أنتبه فلا تؤخر الحق الذي لك عندي لا تؤخره يعني هو إما أن يغفر أو أو يطالب إما أن يصفح ويسامح وإما أن يطالب الظالم ب أو من ظلمه بأنه لي عندك هذا الحق ولا يؤخره ويتركه في من غير تنبيه فهذا من توفيق العبد إلى ذلك He said that if um, so, the um, uh, the fourth condition of tawbah is to um, is to seek the forgiveness of other people and put their wrongs right. Since if somebody is, it's from the tawfiq of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for um, a servant that if he has been wronged, he doesn't delay. He doesn't say that uh, that uh, doesn't turn away and says that I will get you on the day of judgment which is a right that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. But it goes against 
the way of uh, brotherhood, true brotherhood. So if somebody has been wrong, they're on the other side, they should do one of two things. Either they should uh, alert the person uh, who has who's wronged them that uh, you, you've, you've wronged me and so I've, uh, I have a right over you so that he can get it back in this world. Or he forgives him without that other person seeking their forgiveness. في حق الظالم أن يشكر الله تعالى على هذه المنة التي أكرمه الله تعالى بها بأن ساق له من يبين له الأمر قبل فوات الأوان. And from the perspective of somebody who who did the wrong, when somebody comes to him and tells him that uh, he has been wronged, then he should see this, he should be grateful for the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah had, Allah brought him this person and sent him to him so that he can set things aright in this world before he loses the chance to do it forever. And, and he shouldn't, uh, he shouldn't uh, act as though nothing ever happened uh, regarding this wrong, as though he never did anything wrong, nor should he justify it and say that actually there's nothing wrong with what I did. And then a surah of Sira. Baligatul Ahamiya. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusawi saf. قال له أحد الصحابة أوجعتني يا رسول الله فرسول الله في هو اللطف كله وهو الرحمة كلها قال أوجعتني يا رسول الله ماذا قال الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام لم يبرر ذلك ولم يتجاهل ذلك وقال يعني اقتص مني طلب من المظلوم الذي يدعي المظلمة قال له اقتص مني فقال لكن أنا بطني مكشوف يا رسول الله فأكشف عن بطنك حتى يكون القصاص يعني متساوي فكشف عن بطنه يا رسول الله فلثمه وقبله هذا رسول الله لم يبرر مع علمه مع علمه عليه الصلاة والسلام أنه لم يؤذيه في تسوية الصف ولكن لا ي... لم يترفع الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام عن أن يستجيب لتلك المظلمة التي ادعاها من ادعاها. There is an incident that is a very eloquent and important incident in the سيرة of the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was once straightening the lines of the companions as before they went into battle. And as he was doing that, he poked one of the companions in his abdomen. And the companion said to the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, You've caused me pain, O Messenger of Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Take he immediately said to him, he said, uh, uh, take your right back. And uh, he didn't justify himself. He didn't make excuses, even though he knew that he hadn't, uh, he hadn't uh, harmed this person, but he didn't uh, uh, lift himself and arrogate himself and say that, how dare you say this? And I didn't do anything wrong. He immediately said to this man, to the companion, um, take your right back. Um, and uh, so the companion, he said that my, my, uh, my abdomen was exposed, so you need to expose yours. And the Prophet وسلم, exposed his abdomen and the companion before, uh, instead of poking him back, he kissed him over there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Use it. There was a question, um, and that question is that it's about uh, guilt. And how we can, um, how we can uh, uh, 
what's the meaning of, of, of repentance? And uh, if, if it comes from fear and, uh, and uh, repentance and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is supposed to make one happy. But if one fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment all the time, then how can one ever be happy? Can um, one ask the question that إِنْ كَانَ الْقُرْبُ مِنَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى مِثْلَ الْعِيدِ وَالْقُرْبُ يَعْنِي يَأْتِي بَابُهُ التَّوْبَةِ وَالتَّوْبَةِ يَأْتِي مِنْ خَوْفِ الْعِقَابِ وَخَوْفِ مِنَ الْعِقَابِ هُوَ شَيْءٍ يعني لا يجامع الراحة فإذا كان الشخص دائما يعني مستغرقا في في أن أنه يستحق العذاب من الله سبحانه وتعالى ويخاف أن ينزل عليه في أي وقت فكيف يكون كل 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 أوقاته عيد هذا كأنه يتعلق في معايدة العيد نعم <تصفيق> عندما تكون يكون الحق معك ويكون جليسك أليس هذا عيد هو ليس مثل العيد هو العيد بحد ذاته متى العيد أن يكون حبيبك معك أن تكون مع حبيبك فإذا كان الله مع الذاكر أنا مع عبدي ما ذكرني وتحركت بي شفتاه أنا جليس من ذكرني أليس هذا عيد؟ said that عيد is when you are with Allah سبحانه وتعالى and so عيد uh, and um, so this goes back to a previous uh, lesson when we talked about every day being Eid. So he says that when we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am the companion of the one who remembers me. So if if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one's companion, then isn't that Eid? But then هناك خوف من من الذنوب فإذا تاب منها ف ينتقل من هذا من هذا إلى الخوف من العيوب فإذا تاب منها انتقل منها من الخوف إلى رؤية الطاعة من نفسه لكن هذا الخوف ليس كالخوف الأول نعم so he says that when one when first repents from sin and after one, uh, and that there's a fear that causes one to repent from sins. Then one repents from defects within one. And there's another kind of fear that causes one to repent from the defects within one. Then there's another kind uh, of repentance, which is repentance from acts of worship. And there's a fear that causes one to do that, that kind of repentance. And the fear of each stage is different. والخوف ربما ربما يكون ربما يكون إذا وصل لليأس هذا يكون من يعني من عمل الشيطان إذا أوصل صاحبه لليأس فهذا يكون من عمل الشيطان أما إذا دفعه هذا الخوف لتصحيح سيره وكثرة الإقبال على الله سبحانه وتعالى فهذا محمود أما إذا وصل الخوف الخوف من الله حتى يصل الأمر به أن يقنط وييأس هذا عمل الشيطان يصبح الخوف مشكلة says fear um, can become despair so we have to distinguish between the two things. When fear becomes despair, then it's a blameworthy trait. Um, fear is when what, fear is something that drives one towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
despair is something that uh, that drives one away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, um, so there, not all, not every fear is a healthy fear. إذا كان هذا باعثه القنوط من الله تعالى واليأس من الله تعالى فهناك نصوص كثيرة لتنفي هذا So if one finds that one is in a state of despair then what one needs to do is one needs to bring one doesn't need to bring to, then one needs to bring to mind other things um, other um, uh, things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said من النصوص أتدرون ما حق الله على على العباد أو ما حق حق الله على العبد أن يعبده ولا يشرك به شيئا وحق العبد على الله أن لا يعذبه هذا من أجل أن يصرف اليأس والقنوط أما إذا كان الخوف من أجل أن تصحيح الأوصاف وزيادة الإقبال فهذا محمود مطلوب He said that one of these is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that, do you know what is the right of this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over his servant? And uh, the companions asked him, what is it? He said that you should worship Allah and not associate anyone besides. And then he said, do you know the right that the servant has over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he does that? And uh, they asked him to explain. He said that he not... Uh, not uh, punish him, that he not uh, torture him. So when we, so this is something that one that we need to. So if if we find ourselves in a state of despair, then we don't think about things that cause us fear, but we think about the fact that if we don't uh, associate anything with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, that's it, and we don't worship any god apart from Him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that we have a right over him, even though nobody has any right over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a an eloquent way of saying that he will not, we have a right over him, that he not punish us. In other words, he won't punish us. And another hadith to keep in mind is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that somebody who repents from a sin, it's as though he doesn't have any sin. He doesn't, not, not as though he doesn't have any sin. So when one repents, the sin is gone. So one doesn't, uh, you, one, you don't, you, one doesn't need to remain in a state of fear because one then believes that the sin has been erased and one is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, can um, الفرق بين التوبة من من الذنوب والتوبة من العيوب لأن التوبة من من العيوب أحيان إذا كان الشخص يعني كثيرا ما إذا يدخل الشخص في في اليأس يعتقد في نفسه عيبا فيتوب إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى لكن مع أو 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 يستغفر يستغفر الله سبحانه وتعالى لكن يعتقد في نفسه أنه فيه عيوب كثيرة ودا و... ولن تنتفي هذه العيوب ف... فيدخله هذا إلى حالة يأس فمل... لكن عندما شرحتم أنتم يعني جعلتم التوبة من, من, ال... من العيوب أخف من... من التوبة من الذنوب فممكن شرح الفرق بينهما و... الذنوب من الحرام التوبة من الذنوب يعني التوبة من الحرام والتوبة من العيوب التوبة من خلاف الأولى مثل سيدي أي خلاف أولى يعني مثلا أكلت ولم تسمي مثلا فليس ليس التوبة من العيوب يعني التوبة من الحسد مثلا أو التوبة من آه هذا هذا من الكبائر هذا هذا ذنوب هذه التوبة من الذنوب مو توبة من العيوب هذه 
نعم. الحسد الغش الكذب هذه من أك... أك... كبائر الذنوب نعم. العيوب خلاف الاولى نعم um, so um, he mentioned that توبه so there's four kinds of توبه he said there's توبه from sins acts of disobedience and there's توبه from flaws and defects there's توبه from acts of worship and there's توبه from everything apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so توبه from sins is repenting from something that is haram such as uh, doing an act of disobedience or uh, from envy or from arrogance repenting from these things falls in the first category repentance from flaws means repenting from things that are better to avoid such as you ate food and you didn't say bismillahir rahmanir rahim so one repents from that and that's a lesser um, it's a it's this repentance is now a perfection it's not an obligatory repentance and then the next step is that one repents from acts of worship and uh, from seeing that, that, that one has um, independent agency and one deserves and some kind of entitlement as a result of doing those acts of worship, one repents from that. And the fourth stage is one repents from, uh, from uh, everything apart from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, one makes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one's sole goal in one's life. So, uh, can, can a soal, there, was the quest, there was a question that how do we forgive ourselves for doing something, uh, something wrong, for uh, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So, how do we forgive ourselves for doing something wrong, for disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? نغفر أنفسنا يعني صدر من 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 نفسي شيء فصرت يعني يعني لا أستطيع أن أغفر نفسي وهذا يجعلني يعني يعني هذا معنى السؤال أن أنه يؤدي إلى حالة حالة يأس فكيف يعني كيف تحليل هذا الأمر هذا 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 خوف غير محمود يعني أنت لا تستطيع أن تغفر لذنب لنفسك والله يغفر الذنوب لماذا تتخلق بأخلاق الله تعالى؟ So the question was how can I how can I you know, I find it difficult to forgive myself so um, so she said that this is uh, this is this is fear that is um, not praiseworthy. So it's not a good fear. It's not a healthy fear. So one should think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you for, for your sins. So how can you not forgive yourself for your sins? So that if this is a sin that you if you disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you bring to mind the verse of the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh my servants who have wronged themselves, don't despair of the mercy of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. There is no sin that is too great to forgive. تستسمحه وترد المظلمة إلى أهلها فإذا تم هذا تمت التوبة بيقين. So uh, if uh, if if the uh, if the sin involves wronging somebody else, then one adds to it. You 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 ask their forgiveness, and when all of the conditions of توبة have have been fulfilled, then definitely the توبة has happened. And uh, and uh, and the sin has been forgiven. لكن أين المشكلة هنا إذا كان الذنب من مع حضرة الحق استغفرت والله يغفر وإذا كان مع الخلق استسمحتهم واستبرأت من تلك المظلمة منهم 
تم الأمر لكن إذا بقي هذا الأمر عندك فهذا من عداوة الشيطان ليدخل عليك اليأس والقنوط فأنت ما دام أنك تبت من الذنب الذي بينك وبين الله وأرجعت الحق إلى أصحابه فالأمر قد تم بفضل الله تعالى He said that the matter of repentance is if it's an act of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then one seeks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and repents to him and uh, the sin is erased and if it's a matter of wronging other people one seeks their forgiveness and the matter is finished but if after doing this you find that you return to yourself and um, and there is a uh, there, there's a, a sense of uh, there's a sense of persistent guilt then this is not part of toba and so it's it's an it's an uh, it's a misapplication it's an unhealthy it's an unhealthy guilt and it's and it's driving one away from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not part of toba and it's not praiseworthy to have وهذا محل قول الجنيد رضي الله عنه عندما سأله خاله السري السقطي عندما سأل كبار إخوانه وقال لهم ماذا تقولون في التوبة فكل واحد أدلى بدلوه هذا يقول الندم وهذا يقول البكاء وهذا يقول كذا وهذا يقول كذا والجنيد صغير بينهم قال له ماذا تقول أيها الغلام في التوبة قال أن تنسى ذنبك قال لك وكيف ذلك قال ذكرك الجفاء في وقت الصفاء من الجفاء So this is uh, uh, there is an event that's the uh, story that Sayyid Abu Munir mentioned uh, not a story it's something, it's something that happened uh, Imam Al-Junaid when he was a young boy he used to attend the gatherings of Sariya Saqati his uncle, who was an accomplished uh, uh, spirit, person in the spiritual path. And so they were discussing what, what tawbah is. And, uh, and some of them, they said that tawbah means that you never forget your sin. And uh, Junaid said, tawbah is that you forget, for, forget your sin. Tawbah is that you, you make tawbah and then you don't think about your sin anymore. And uh, people were surprised and, and they asked him, how can you say that? He says that when you make tawbah, you're going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you and he has become somebody, he has become your companion. So when you are with a friend who has become your companion and you turn to him and you say, remember that day I did something bad and I, and I, and I disobeyed you? He said, this is an act of rudeness. So when you find yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go back and think about all the bad things and bring them in between one and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, that's not part of tawbah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's something that one should avoid. فَإِذَا أَيِّسَ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنْكَ مِنَ الْإِغْوَائِ لِلْكَبَائِرِ ثُمَّ أَيِّسَ مِنْكَ مِنَ الْفَعْلِ الصَّغَائِرِ وَالْلَمَامِ ثُمَّ أَيِّسَ مِنْكَ من أن تؤذي خلقا من خلق الله إذا أيس من ذلك كله ثم أيس منك أن ترى لنفسك منزلة أو, أو, أو ترى منك طاعة كمان أيس من ذلك كله فهو يأتي عاد من باب آخر ويقول أنت فعلت وأنت عملت وأنت 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 يدخل عليك اليأس والخوف المذموم من الله سبحانه وتعالى يصل الأمر إلى القنوط فهذا مدخل من من مداخل الشيطان. So we have the thoughts that come to our mind have many sources. So one of the sources of our thoughts, so that we have angelic thoughts, we have thoughts that come from Allah سبحانه وتعالى, we have thoughts that come from the angels and we have thoughts that come from the shaitan. So one of the, so these thoughts of despair, their their origin is the shaitan. They're not coming from oneself. They're coming from him, and they come from him because he tries one door, 
and he tries to make you be humble. He tries, uh, you know, to make you arrogant. He's unable to do that. He tries to make you disobey Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He's unable to do that. He tries to make you, uh, and uh, and so and and the question is, they're all like, they're they're a humble person. They don't disobey Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So Shaitan has has despaired from all of these things, and so he's found this other door to enter into, to cause despair. So this thought is not coming from you, it's coming from an external source. So it's important for us to identify what that external source is. إذا أخطأ استغفر فإذا أيس الشيطان من أنه كلما أحدث أمرا استغفر منه هذا العبد كيف يريد أن يظهر عداوته له بأن يجعله يقنط من رحمة الله ييأس من رحمة الله فيذكره الذنب للقنوط واليأس لا يذكره الذنب للتوبة والندم فهذا فرق بين الأمرين فهو إذا وجد هذا يعني هذا من الشيطان أما إذا وجد الخوف الدافع للعمل والذي يضع العبد متذللا بين يدي الله سبحانه وتعالى طالبا عفو الله تعالى هذا الخوف المحمود هذا من من الله سبحانه وتعالى أما ذلك من الشيطان يريد أن يخوفك ويؤسك ويقنطك من الله سبحانه وتعالى فالميزان بيدك um, so um, the uh, when the, the it's impossible to not commit a sin nobody no there's no one who never disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said every son of Adam frequently commits sins. So the, uh, it's not, one can never be in a situation where one does not commit sins. But, uh, but uh, the, 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 po the point is that when, when, one, when one sins, one returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And when one returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance, then the sin is erased. And the Prophet sallallahu said that all of the children of Adam frequently uh, sin. And the best of those who are like that are those who frequently repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when, when one uh, returns to Allah, one repents every time one commits a sin, then shaitan despairs of entering into one, uh, or of, uh, of drawing one to him through committing a sin. So he finds another door. And that door is despair. So, and he puts it into the repentance that one does. So what one needs to do is when you needs to have a um, a measure, and you need to measure the you see what's happening. So what you do is you step outside, and you see this thing that I'm doing, this fear that I have, is it drawing me? Uh, is it pushing me towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala through happiness and eagerness in a way that is like Eid, or is it um, is it is it uh, putting me in some other state? Is it putting me in a state of despair? And if it's putting me in a state of despair, then I need to recognize that, that, that what I need is not fear. What I need is I need to remind myself of the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of, uh, of, uh, of, of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what I need to do. And I turn away from, from, this, uh, from, from, from these thoughts towards that. So I have a, another question I'm going to ask. Um, I'll, I'll ask in Arabic first, and I'll, then I'll, I'll uh, uh, so, so I'll, I'll, I'll say it in English. So the question is that sometimes we go through difficult circumstances that leave us in a, well, we feel hurt, we feel, um, we feel that people have put us down um, for many years, and that leaves us in a situation where we are constantly having these kinds of negative thoughts about ourselves. So I'm going to ask how, what can one do in order to come out of these uh, negative self thoughts? So the, uh, 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 any, uh, 
قد يجد البعض أن أن أنه وهذا شيء منتشر أن يعني يعني كثير ممن يسلمون مثلا أو يرجعون إلى الدين ف يعني يوجد سوء معاملة بهم ويفرون منها إلى الله سبحانه وتعالى ويكون يعني في يعني كأنها نعمة لكن آثار سوء المعاملة قد قد تبقى فيجد الشخص في نفسه كثيرا أن أنه يعني أنه يعني يجد الإحباط يجد يجد اليأس يجد وتأتي يعني أن أن يعني أنا لا أستحق أن أغفر أو لا لا يعني أنا لا شيء فهل كيف يعني هل تنصحون بذكر أو أشياء أخرى يعني حتى يعني يداوم عليه عليه عليها الشخص ليخرج من 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 هذا ليساعده في الخروج يساعده في ذلك الاستغفار وسلامة الصدر على الخلق استغفار من ماذا سيدي؟ استغفار من هو من ماذا يشكو؟ ألا ف... ألا يشكو من 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 ماذا يشكو هو؟ يشكو من ال من يعني أظن يعني يقول قد يقول يعني يشكو من احتقار نفسه الزائد وقد نقول انه يشكو من من الياس من الله سبحانه وتعالى فلا ادري كيف اصيبه نعم الياس ليس من الله تعالى الياس من الشيطان نعم ف يعني اذا اذا علمنا العداوه التي يعني جعلت في الشيطان لنا يعني الله سبحانه وتعالى فتح لك باب التوبه ولا وقال ان الله لا يغفر ان يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك ولو اتيتني بملء الارض ذنوبا لاتيتك بملئها مغفره ولو كانت ذنوبك كعنان السماء لا غفرتها لك هذه النصوص فما الذي ييئسك بعد هذا إذا تحققت لا ترى إلا أن الشيطان يريد منك أن تيأس So uh, he says that the first thing is that uh, one uh, uh, the one need, you need to understand that the despair is, is this origin is from the shaitan. And he wants you to despair. And he wants you to despair because he has despaired. It's because of how good you are. He's despaired of leading you astray in the way that he leads other people astray. So he's entered upon you through this door. And so when you need to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, he says there's so many verses in the Quran about forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that he forgives um, everything uh, for whoever he wills. It, he, doesn't for, he doesn't forgive that he be associated partners with, but he forgives besides that everything for whoever he wills. And he says in a hadith Qudsi, he says that if, if, if you were to come to him, with sins that filled, uh, that went all the way up to the, to the heavens, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would come to you with a forgiveness that goes all the way up to the heavens. So, uh, so if, if, one, if one is despairing of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then when, when first one needs to identify that this is not, a, it's not healthy, it's not part of religion, it's coming from uh, the shaitan. الحديث لا يخافن أحدكم إلا ذنبه ولا يرجو إلا ربه هذا نص والنصوص في المغفرة كثيرة جدا كثيرة جدا أصلا هل خلقنا الله تعالى معصومون سؤال هل خلقنا الله تعالى معصومين لا No. So the question, the question is, so the, the hadiths about forgiveness and verses about forgiveness are so many. Um, and, uh, and the question is, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us um, uh, in, a, in a way that we wouldn't sin, that we would never sin? Answer is no. 
ما دام اننا لسنا معصومين وهو التواب الرحيم تواب غفار صيغه مبالغه تواب غفار ما لو كان كل كل في كل نفس لك ذنب وفي كل نفس لك توبه انت على خير عظيم وهذا الذي لا يرضي الشيطان ان تحدث بعد كل ذنب توبه هذا الذي لا يرضيه فما كيف يخرجك من هذا يوسوس لك في ان انك غير مقبول وانك لا لا يغفر ذنبك هذا من اكبر الذنوب هذا هو من اكبر الذنوب ان تعتقد ان ذنبك لا يغفر مع وجود التوبه والانابه وال... فيستغفر منه نعم فيستغفر منه سيدي طبعا يستغفر منه ب... 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 بطرده بطرد هذا الوسوسه عنه بكثره الذكر وسلامه الصدر والاحسان الى الخلق so uh, he said that the um, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't create us um, uh, protected from sin. We commit sins. And the, we commit sins. And at the same time, he says that he is al-ghaffar. He f- frequently forgives sins. He is at tawab He frequently ac- accepts repentance. So what does that mean? It means that we commit sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to repent to him. He, uh, he created us because he wanted us to repent to him. And so the point is that whenever we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we return to him in repentance. Uh, so the, when, when, the, when the shaitan, when he sees this in us, then it's something very that, that uh, causes him despair because he wants to turn us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that's why he enters through the door of causing despair. So despair is a major sin. It's a kabira. So to believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to forgive one or that he is, that, and uh, this, is, this itself is an act of disobedience that requires, that, that, that needs to be, it's obligatory for us to turn it away, either by repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it, uh, but provided, and that, but that repentance shouldn't return us into that state. Um, or, and and one, one turns it away, one turns it away, one pushes it away, one pushes it away through uh, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through having uh, purity of heart, purity of heart by not having any negative feelings towards anyone else, and through um, being good to other people. Doing good things for other people. يوجد أن تسأل أخت أن كيف كيف يعني نتيقن بال كيف يكون عندنا يقين بأننا كنا مخلصين في في التوبة. يعني و يعني خصوصا اذا يعني ان كنا يعني وجدنا انفسنا يعني يعني نقع في نفس الذنب يعني مره ثانيه فهل هذا يعني ان توبت ان توبتنا لم يكن مخلصا لم يكن نصوحا ما دام ما دام انك اقلعت عنها وما دام أن أنك ندمت عليها وما دام أنك عزمت على أن لا تعود فبيقين التوبة صادقة وخالصة يقين um, So the question is how can we be sure of our sincerity when we repent particularly if we find ourselves falling into the same sin does that mean that we have not been sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He said that as long as you fulfill the conditions of the tawbah, if, meaning that you feel remorse and you stop at the moment from committing the sin and 
at that at the, at that moment you resolve not to return to the sin, then you have you are sure that you have repented to Allah subhanahu wa taala because all these things things are there, and you're sure that your sin has been forgiven. In لم تقلع وتقول تبت هذا ليس التوبة يعني هذا المعيار إن أنت إن إن لم تقلع عن الذنب فأنت لست بتائب إن لم تندم عليه أنت لست بتائب إن لم تعزم على عدم العودة لهذا الذنب أنت لست بتائب وهذه ليست إخلاص في التوبة أما إذا تحققت الشروط التي هذه من الندم والإقلاع والعزم على أن لا يعود فهذه بيقين التوبة الخالصة said that if you haven't um, if you haven't uh, 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 left the sin or if you haven't uh, if you don't feel remorse or if you haven't uh, resolved not to return to it again then there's no tawbah and it's not a sincere tawbah but if these three things are there then it's a sincere tawbah رجل حقيقة يعني قصة حقيقية ذهب إلى الحج وكان يشرب الخمر فذهب إلى الحج وقال يعني تبت إلى الله من شرب الخمر ثم أنهى حجه وعاد إلى دمشق بعد فترة جلس مع جلاسه أصحابه الذين قالوا قدموا له الخمر قال لا أستغفر الله أنا والله الحمد لله تبت قال أشرب يعني وتتوب قال لا الحمد لله تبت بعدين كلفتني الحجة خمسين ألف ليرة سورية في ذلك الوقت يعني كلفتني الحجة خمسين ألف قال له أحد جلاسه هذه خمسين ألف واشرب ثم تتوب شرب بعد بعد 12 يوم تقريبا توفي توفي شارب خمر أين العزم على عدم العودة فما دام أنه تحقق الإقلاع عن الذنب وتحقق الندم عليه وتحقق العزم على أن لا يعود لا يداخلك شك بأن هذه التوبة ليست صادقة لا يداخلك شك وإذا داخلك شك فهذا من عمل الشيطان ما فهمت الربط بين القصة وبين بين ما قلتم في الأخير سيدي لأنه, لأنه عندما هو لم يندم ولم يقلع ولم يعزم على يعزم على عدم العودة فهو عندما جاء من يدفع له ثمن الحجة عاد فإذا تحقق الشروط الثلاثة التي هذا في حق الله تعالى إذا تحققت هذه الشروط بأنه ندم ندما حقيقيا وبأنه أقلع ترك المعصية وبأنه عزم على أن لا يعود فلا يشك في توبته يجب عليه أن لا يشك في توبته So there's, this is a true story about a man, he used to drink wine and then he went on Hajj and he came back from Hajj and uh, his uh, people who used to drink, drink wine with, they said, come drink wine with us. He said, no, I've made a tawbah. I, I went to Hajj and I've repented. I'm not going to drink wine again. They said, it's okay, just drink it and then make tawbah again. He said, no, I spent 50,000 uh, liras uh, to go on Hajj. And so one of them, he said, here you go, here's 50,000, drink and repent afterwards. And so he took the 50,000 and he returned to drinking and 12, 12 days later he died. So this is an illustration of someone who did not have a resolve to, uh, to who initially did not have a resolve to never return to the sin. That just uh, because he could, it was a matter of 50,000 liras and, and he, he, this person was not sincere in his resolve to not return to the sin. He says that, but 
so this so if if it's like this then then the toba isn't there but if you find in yourself that you have uh you have uh, you have remorse and you have resolved right now that you're not going to return to the sin and you have uh uh you have uh uh, you've stopped doing the sin right now, then it's obligatory on you to have certainty that you have done your toba and that the toba is a sincere toba. Yeah. 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 ثم قالوا لي فيما بينهم قالوا لا ينجينا إلا أن يذكر كل واحد منا عملا أخلص به لله تعالى ويدعو الله تعالى به فكل واحد منهم هذا ذكر خدمته لوالديه فانزاحت الصخرة عن باب الغار إلا أنهم لا يستطيعون أن يخرجون وهذا أعطى الأجير حقه ونماه له فانزاحت الصخرة عن, الغار عن باب الغار لكن أنهم لا يستطيعون أن يخرجون أما الثالث فقال يعني كان لي ابنة عم وطلبت منه المساعدة ثم يعني راودها عن نفسها ثم لم تقبل ثم ضاقت بها الأمور ثم جاءت إليه وقالت يعني تطلب المساعدة فراودها عن نفسها فقبلت لاحتياجها فعندما أرادها كما يريد الرجل من زوجته قالت اتق الله فارتفع قال فارتفع عنها يعني هو الآن يذكر معصية ويذكر الإقلاع عنها فقال إن كنت فعلت هذا لأجلك ففرج عنا ما نحن فيه فانفتح باب الغار وهذا في الحديث أظنه في البخاري يعني الإقلاع عن عن الذنب بحقيقة توبة مو مو نحن نقول توبة ولا متوبة نقول ولاية صار الإقلاع عن الذنب ولاية فأن تقلع عن الذنب أن تندم على الذنب أن تعزم أن لا تعود على الذنب والله أنت الو... أنت الولي وإذا لم تكن ولي من الولي said <laughs> so, um, the there's a famous hadith of um, three people who went into a cave and then a boulder fell down and blocked the entrance to the cave and they feared they're going to die and so each one of them said that remember each one of them uh, made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through an act of disobedience that they had done. Um, and each time one person remembered an act of disobedience and said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I did it sincerely for your sake, then uh, take us out from what we're in. The boulder moved a little bit. The last of the three was a man who he wanted, uh, he, uh, he fell in love with his cousin and he wanted to commit adultery with her. And uh, she refused. But then she fell into difficult times and she needed money. And she came to him asking him for money. He said, well, only if you give me what I want. And so she, because of her need, because of her hunger, she, uh, she uh, relented and she said, okay, I need the money. And then just as he was about to um, uh, do to her what a man does to his wife, she said to him, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he uh, persist, he, uh, uh, he uh, uh, stopped doing what he was doing and he uh, stepped back. And he said at that, and so he remembered this. And he said, uh, he said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if I did that for you sincerely for your sake, then, uh, then uh, take us out of what we are in. And the boulder was removed and they were all three of them, they were able to walk out. So he said that, uh, that what does this person do? He stopped the sin. He said, stopping, uh, stop, uh, stopping from doing a sin is, it's toba. Not only is it toba, it's wilaya, it's closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So if you, if you stop committing a sin and you have remorse and, uh, and you fulfill the conditions of the tawbah, then you aren't just, haven't just done uh, tawbah, you've become somebody who's a wali, you've become somebody who's close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was something that this man remembered and because of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the boulder and they, and they became free. Then that if in this case, if you if you stop if you don't stop uh, committing a sin, if stopping committing a sin doesn't make you a wali of Allah subhanahu wa taala, then who is a wali? There is no other wali. Said that the, the problem is if you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you wrong somebody and then you don't care about it. This is the problem. And, and, and you're not doing that. There was a woman who was mentioned to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She used to stand in prayer and fast uh, uh, all day, every day, or frequently, but she used to harm her neighbors. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there's no good in her, she's in the hellfire. فَإِذَا نُبِّهْتَ إِلَىٰ شَيْءٍ وَقَعَ مِنْكَ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ أَنْتَ تَعْتَقِدْ بِعَدَمْ وُقُوعِهِ مِنْكَ لا تجعل لهذه المظلمة عدم مبالاة استسمح من صاحبها ولو كنت كما قال سيدي أبو مديان حط رأسك واستغفر بلا بلا سبب يعني جاءتك مظلمة وقال لك أنت ظلمتني يا أخي إن كنت تعتقد أنك لم تظلمه استبرئ منه واستسمح منه وتحلل من ما نسبه إليك أما أنك لا تبالي هنا المشكلة so if somebody commits a sin and or they wrong somebody else or somebody comes to them and say, says that you've wronged me then, then what one should do is one should, uh, one should ask the person to forgive one even if you believe that you haven't wronged them um, this is what uh, Sidi Bumadiyan said in his famous poem um, uh, and one of the one of the lines is that uh, that uh, lower your head and seek uh, and and say say seek forgiveness for, uh, for without any reason. So what does this mean? It means if somebody comes and says that I have a right over you, even if you believe that they don't have a right, seek ask them to forgive you anyway. As for wronging other people and not caring about it. This is the problem. This is, this is where the problem is. The problem isn't in somebody who has repented. Uh, that person is a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ahad al-awliya al-lazina rabbi akramana bi ru'yatihim wa kana mu'taqad inda al-khasi wal-aam. Sidna Sheikh Shukri zaarahu, Sidna Sheikh Mustafa zaarahu, wa yata'addabuna ma'ahu al-adab al-jam, wa huwa yata'addabu ma'ahum al-adab al-ghayr ma'qool. هذا الرجل هذا الرجل إذا لقيه أحد ولو لشيء من الزمن قليل ولو خمس دقائق عند مفارقته إياه والله لا يترك يده يمسك بيده يقول لا لا أتركك حتى تقول لي سامحتك في الدنيا والآخرة ما فعل شيء وربما يعني كنا نزوره مع مثلا مع سيدنا شيخ مصطفى وسيدنا شيخ شكري والرجل يضع الطعام ويفعل يعني أخلاق محمدية أخلاق محمدية مع هذا لا يتركنا واحد واحد لا يتركنا ويوصلنا إلى باب السيارة يمشي معنا إلى باب سيارتنا ثم يقول يترجى 
ويقول قل لي سامحتك في الدنيا والآخرة سامحتك في الدنيا والآخرة هذا كانت أخلاقه مع كل الخلق هذا من كان يقف على الطاولة ويحمد الله سبحانه لا وتعالى لا هذاك هذاك غيره هذا غيره هذا من أهل الانكسار من السادة الرفاعية <تصفيق> الذي يقولون يعني يتصورون أن الرواس الشيخ الرواس رحمه الله يشبهون يعني إذا أرادوا أن يشبهون صورة صورة بصورة هم فعلوا نفس صورة هذا الشيخ اسمه ناجي الناجي اسمه اسمه ناجي وكنيته الناجي فاسمه ناجي الناجي يعني يقولون لو صورة الإمام الرواس هي كصورته فكذا كانت هذه من أخلاقه أنه لا يفارقك حتى تقول له قل لي سامحتك في الدنيا والآخرة فنحن بحاجة بحاجة أن نسامح بعضنا وأن المشكلة في عدم المبالاة إن كنت لا تبالي فهنا المشكلة لا يبالى بك إن كنت إن كنت لا تبالي فلا يبالى بك uh, there was one of the uh, friends of Allah somebody who was believed to be a friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst the generality and the specific uh, and, and amongst the scholars and non-scholars um, he used to they used to visit uh, he used to visit him with Sheikh uh, Mustafa used to visit him with Sheikh Shukri they would go and visit them and Sheikh Shukri, Sheikh, Shukri, Sheikh Mustafa would have adab with him they would be hum- they would humble themselves before him and he would humble themselves before them in a way that is unimaginable so he would uh, he would uh, he would serve them food um, and he would but then what he, when they would leave so he had muhammadan characteristics attraction as a part of them he was hospitable serve them food but if anybody if any one of his uh, characteristics was that if, if he met anybody even if for only five minutes if that person before he parted company he would take he would hold his hand and he would refuse to let go until he said say i forgive you in this world and in the next world and he would do that to everybody even if he hadn't done anything so every time they visited he would hold their hands and say tell me i forgive you in this world and the next so he was a he was a rifai, and they used to say his name was Naji and Naji. Naji is his name. Naji means somebody who's saved. So his name was saved from the hellfire, in other words, and uh, and his his title was he was called saved the saved, <laughs> and his title was the one who was saved. And they used to liken him to Imam al Rawas, one of the uh, one of the um, uh, poets, spiritual poets of the rifai. Of the Rifais, and they say that he used to resemble him in uh, in uh, in uh, in the way that he looked, and so he says that the this returns to the he says that one shouldn't one should never act when when somebody else feels that they've been wronged that one does not care, and he says that if you don't care then you then nobody else will care about you. يقول من من أقواله رحمة الله عليه رحمة الله عليه وتوفي في تركيا من يعني سنوات قليلة ونقل إلى إلى بلادنا دائما إذا يريد أن يكلم أحد دائما يقول له يا عين عمك ما فهمت يا عين عمك يعني ال- الذي يحبه عمه لا لا إذا أراد أن يكلمك أنت لا. أول مرة تراه <تصفيق> لا. يعني ليس ما يقول لك يا عين عمك أنت عيني يعني عمك يعني أنا أنا أي. فيقول أنا. أنت يعني عين عمك يعني ينزلك منزلة عينه آه ما شاء الله فكل ما ليتكلم مع الصغير مع الكبير يا عين عمك يا عين عمك يا عين عمك قل لي سامحتك دنيا آخرى يا عين عمك شو هال شو هالرقة شو هاللطف شو هال شيء عجيب جدا عجيب. He passed away a couple of uh, years ago in Turkey and then he was transported and buried in in uh, in his land in the lands of Sham. 
So when he, whenever he um, met anybody, he would say to him, oh, uh, I of your uncle. So he, meaning that I'm your uncle and because he was aged and he would do this with everybody, with old, with young. And he would say, oh, you who are the I, in other words, the beloved of, of your uncle. I'm your uncle and I love you, in other words. And he would say this to everybody. And so he said, what wonderful, uh, what wonderful character. هذه جرت بيننا وبين من يعرفه إذا تكلمنا مع أحد من من يعرف الشيخ نقول له يا عين عمك يا يابو يا يابو كذلك هذه كلمته يا يابو بدل يا بابا يا أبتي يا أبي يا يابو يا يابو إيه بدل يعني بدل ما يقول بابا مثلا ينادي يقول يا يابو يصغرها 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 يعني من أجل أن تكون فيها كل اللطف كل الحنان كل العطف. He used to say "Oh my little father" uh, to everybody um, in a very gentle way. So he's saying he was very gentle, very soft. Very الدين كله أخلاق سيدي الدين كله أخلاق. فإذا خلى الدين من ال... إذا دخل الدين من الخلق فقدت الدين فقد الدين. So religion is all good character and so when there's good character is gone then religion is gone. جزاك الله خيرا سيدي يا عين عمك يا عين أخوك نقول كنت 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 افكر اني اريد هذه الكلمه منكم فاني كنت اني اريد ان اطلبها جاءت من خير الطلب جاءت لحال جاءت والله انا يعني ابتدي بها في كل لي خالات وعماء يعني عندما اكلمهم اتمثل بها اقول يا عين ابن اختك لخالتي مو خالتي خاله امي أو خالتي أقول لها يا عين ابن اختك متمثلا ب يعني بأخلاقه رحمة الله عليه ورضي الله عنه إذا جمع اللطف إذا جمع اللطف كله تجده مجسدا به رحمة الله عليه. said that he uh, Sibu Munir he takes him as an example and he this is something he learned from him. And he uh, and he uh, he uses he, something he was touched by that he refers to everybody as oh the eye of your uncle or the beloved of your uncle. So he, whenever he speaks to people, he he does that. So when he speaks to his his niece, he says oh oh the eye of of the uncle. But in speaking to him, as, speaking to her as as the as the um, uh, as as the niece. So um, it's an illustration of how. Uh, one takes one takes good things from as many people as one can find because the um yeah, I'm just uh, uh, هو كأن عندما تقولون هذا يعني تقتدون به فهو يعني قلت يعني أريد يعني كأننا يعني نأخذ الخير من uh, من يعني من يعني من كل من نرى فكل كل من نرى فيه خيرا يعني نلتمس منه ونقتدي به يعني الحكمة ضالة المؤمن أينما وجدها التقطها وقلنا في وقت ماضي قلنا أن تجعل البرايا مرايا. No. He said um, so I just remarked that that it's um, that one one looks for goodness in all people. And so when you know when Sirbu Munir used to visit this man and many other people. With with his teachers, with uh, with uh, Sheikh Mustafa, with Sheikh uh, Shukri, and um, it's uh, there's there's goodness is scattered throughout the Ummah of the Prophet And so he said that uh, he remarked that uh, that it you take you take uh, cre- it, there's a rhyming it's in rhyme baraya and uh, baraya means creation you take all of creation as mirrors so you look at them and you look at everybody. And you try to look at them and take something from them 
that to set yourself right, to set yourself straight, to improve yourself. قلت لك عندما دخلت إلى بائع خضار فوجدته يتكلم مع أجيره يقول له أعطني هذا كرما لا أمرا فيعني أستخدمها كثيرا في يعني كلامي مع الناس كلمة راقية جدا He said he mentioned how he entered into a vegetable shop and he found the owner speaking to one of his workers. He told him to do something and he said, do it out of your generosity, not because I'm commanding you to do it. And so he found that to be an extremely gentle way of speaking. And it's something that he uses all the time. And I've heard it many times. And anybody who spent time with him has heard it. But I never knew that he got it from a vegetable seller. <laughs> في السنة كثير يعني عندما قال عندما أردف رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال يا معاذ والله إني لا أحبك هذا في القول وعندما خرج من بيته ووجد سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب فأخذ بيده رسول الله أخذ بيده فهذه هي حركات لكن حركات حركات عباء عبادية من من الدرجة الأولى يعني عندما يقول لسيدنا معاذ أو لغيره إني لا أحبك هذه الكلمة ماذا تفعل في صاحبها كم بكم يشتريها سيدنا كم بكم يشتريها سيدنا معاذ بكل الدنيا وثمنها قليل بكل الدنيا وثمنها قليل عندما يأخذ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يده بيد سيدنا عمر يأخذ يده يعني هذه ماذا فعل ماذا فعل أخذ لبه طرق الباب على سيدنا سعد وسيدنا سعد خلف الباب يقول عليه الصلاة والسلام السلام عليكم أهل الدار أو كذا فسيدنا سعد لا يسمع رده السلام لرسول الله فيقول من خلف الباب عليكم السلام ورحمة الله رسول الله يعيد بعد مدة من الزمن يعني السلام عليكم ورحمة الله آل الدار أو كذا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام ثم يقول سيدنا سعد عليكم السلام ورحمة الله لا يسمع رسول الله وفي المرة الثالثة كذلك فعندما أراد أن يرجع رسول الله فتح الباب وقال أهلا وسهلا برسول الله قال يعني طرقت الباب قال كنت أسمع يا رسول الله وأرد عليك لكن كنت أريد أن تقول السلام عليكم هذه حركات بالله عليك ماذا تكلف أن تمسك يدك بيد أخيك ماذا تكلفك لكن ما هو قدرها عند الله كلمة ليس مرد في الحديث كلمة يتكلم بها الإنسان لا يلقي لها بالا أو يتكلم بها من سخط الله لا يلقي تودي به كذا وكذا وكلمة يتكلم بها من رضوان الله تعالى تبلغ به كذا وكذا كما في الحديث كلمة كلمة تصف Lisa Kazarek. So he said, um, that, uh, that the this gentleness of speaking to somebody and saying like your uncle's eye and uh, 
and uh, out of your generosity, not out of my command. This is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said to Sayyidina Mu'ad, he said to him, O Mu'ad, I love you. And so say after every prayer, and he told him something to say. And so he went out and he said these words and he endeared himself to other people. He was gentle with them. When, uh, when, the, when Sayyidina Umar, he left his house, the Prophet Sallallahu saw him, he went to him and he took him by the hand. It's just a small action. He says that these small actions and these small things, they don't cost anything. They're not big things. There's not something very difficult to do. But they are, but if on the other side, if you were to ask Sayyidina Mu'az, what does this mean to you? It meant the whole world to him. And it led the companions to have a relationship with, Allah, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was like when he went, he, meant, he mentioned another story, said the Prophet وسلم, he went and he stood outside the door of Sayyidina Sa'ad and he said to him, he said, Assalamu Alaikum, he, he greeted him. And uh, you, you greet three times loudly. And if you don't get a response, you leave. So he said, he said, he said it once and Sayyidina Sa'ad, he responded, but he said it softly so that the Prophet وسلم, wouldn't hear. So the Prophet waited, وسلم, he said it again. And again, Sayyidina Mu'ad, Sayyidina Sa'ad, he said it uh, softly so that he wouldn't hear until he said it a third time. And then he was about to depart and he opened the door or he opened the curtain and he said, come in. And he told him that I heard you say, Assalamu Alaikum, but, and I responded to it, but I responded to it softly because I wanted to hear it from you again. So these words of gentleness, kind words, they are, there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that someone might say a kind word uh, and it and it uh, might say something that is mean, and it uh, it is uh, it 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 incurs the wrath of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because of that, they plunge into the hellfire. And someone might say something that is kind, and it earns the good pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, through which they uh, go up degrees into paradise. So these small things, gentle words, they are they are easy to say, but they're worth huge. They're they're tremendous in the eyes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. الله يوفقنا لما تحب وترضى من القول والعمل والحال هذه تسمى أحوال إني لا أحبك أن يمسك بيد صاحبه هذه أحوال فالله يوفقنا لما تحب وترضى من قول وعمل وحال اللهم إنا نسألك بحق لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم أن صلاة وسلاما أن نرث بها أوصاف حبيبك وأن يمتزج وصفنا بوصفه وروحنا بروحه وأن أنفاسنا بأنفاسه وجسدنا بجسده ودمنا بدمه ومعنانا بمعناه وحسه بحسه وحسنا بحسه ومعنانا بمعناه صلى الله عليه وسلم حتى نكون نسخة عنه صلى الله عليه وسلم وما ذلك على الله بعزيز وما ذلك على الله بعزيز وما ذلك على الله بعزيز سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا نستغفرك ونتوب إليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صلي وسلم ربي وأنعم على المعلم نور العيون